Cabinet. We're now in public session and welcome to today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Members, mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via online streaming either on Assembly website or Democracy Live. So, agenda item one then is apologies. Have we any apologies this afternoon? All present and correct. Um, agenda item two then <coughs> are the minutes, which in your pack, pages six to fifteen. Are members content with those minutes? <coughs> members content? Great. Yes, content. So, with your permission, I'll sign them. Uh, agenda item three is the declaration of members' interests. Uh, members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial and other interests in the register of members' interests. Does any member have any interest they wish to declare this afternoon? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, matters arising, I have none of any members any? No, we're going. Uh, just to clear an interest for discussion in the memorandum of understanding to do with special education need and uh, Governor Roddensville's uh, school. Okay, thank you. Um, agenda item five then, correspondence on pages 19 to 39. Um, Mr Donnelly, the Comptroller and Auditor General from the Northern Ireland Audit Office, Mr Rodney Allen, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr Kyle Bingham, the Assembly Sport uh, Officer for the NIAO, have joined the meeting. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 16th of April 2021, pages 19 to 25 of your pack from the Construction Employers Federation to the Department for Infrastructure's Review of the 2011 Planning Act. CEF have welcomed uh, being involved in the Ministerial Planning Engagement Partnership. The response to the department includes um, comments on improving the pre-application discussion to include a matrix checklist in the pre-application community consultation, and they look forward to the introduction of an online portal for planning applications in Northern Ireland, which is going live in 2022. Are members content to note? Okay, thank, thank you. Members, I refer you to an anonymous email dated the 21st of April 2021 at pages 26 to 39 of your pack, which was received by Mr Andrew Muir, MLA, member of this committee, regarding concerns over the um, DFE Energy Division. The email also includes a list of various Assembly written questions on this matter. Members, you content to note this correspondence and forward it to Northern Ireland Audit Office and the, the Committee for the Economy. Great. Great. Mr Donnelly, have you any comments at this stage? Uh, uh, no comments much at this stage. Uh, we'll review it. There's, there's various allegations in it, uh, yeah. not much in the way of hard evidence. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> I'm not sure there's very much we can do with it, okay. uh, just other than mute. <coughs> okay. Could I just ask members if they could please mute themselves? Um, if you don't mind, um, there's quite a bit of background noise. Thank you, members. Um, okay, members, we remain in open session. Agenda item six, then, is the Northern Ireland Audit Office Estimates 2021-22, pages 31 to 44 of your pack. Um, and again, Mr Donnelly, Mr Donnelly, Mr Allen and Mr Bingham will remain in the meeting. M members, the Audit Committee has asked, uh, excuse me, for comments from PAC on the Northern Ireland Audit Office main estimate for 2021-22, which is the agreed protocol between the NIAO and the Audit Committee, to have due regard to the advice of the Department of Finance and the PAC. Members, I refer you to the following papers. The Clerk's memo dated the 26th of April 2021 on the Northern Ireland Audit Office main estimates 2021-22, at pages 41 and 42 of your pack. The Northern Ireland Audit Office main estimates 2021-22 at point pages 43 and 44 of your pack, which includes details of the stages for the Northern Ireland Audit Office budget setting process. Remember, the clerk's memo outlines the process regarding the main estimates 2021-22, which have been prepared in line with the budget and have been agreed with the Assembly Audit Committee for 2021-22. This committee uh, commented at its meeting on the 8th of October 2020, it was content with the proposed budget and the main estimates in your pack today reflects this agreed budget position. Uh, Mr Donnelly, do you have any comment you want to make on that? Uh, other than to say uh, you've approved the 
or you've commented on the budget, the estimate is exactly the same as the budget that you've already commented okay. on. Jim. Does any member have any comment they want to make or are they content? Content. Content? Okay. Members, as the committee has previously indicated, is content with the uh, budget uh, position agreed by the audit committee in October, oh, sorry, autumn 2020. As there are no material changes in the committee content, are we content at the main estimate for 2021-22? Uh, and, and if your members could please confirm that, uh, I will then write to uh, the audit uh, committee that the PAC are content. Agreed? Agreed. <coughs> Okay, at this stage, can I ask Broadcasting then to bring in Colette Cain, Director from the Audit Office, before we discuss the memorandum of reply for our SEN report. Um, is Colette, Colette Cain with us, and can you hear us okay? Yes, Chair, I'm here, and I can hear you, thank you. Okay, good afternoon, thank you. Um, so agenda item seven, then, is the memorandum of reply of the PAC report on the impact review of special educational needs. P pages 46 to 54 of your pack, Mr Donnelly, Mr Allen and Mr Bingham will remain for the meeting. Um, members, we have received the MOR dated the 20th of April 2021 at pages 46 to 54 of your pack from Fiona Elliott of the Department of Finance regarding the report impact review of special educational needs, which we noted at last week's meeting. The MOR was led in the Business Office on the 20th of April 2021. In summary, there were seven recommendations coming out of the report, all of which have been accepted by the Department. The MOR has a substantive uh, amount of information at each recommendation outlining how these are being addressed. Members, are you content the Department has responded appropriately uh, and fully to the recommendations coming out of the report? Uh, and does any member have any comment to make on the MOR? Members? They've accepted their yeah. recommendations. Chair, I have a somewhat deep unhappiness just with the whole thing in EA in regarding to special needs. I think this is the fifth or sixth report now, which has been made between ourselves and the Education Committee. Mm -hmm. And while they're accepting, I think it's something we need to keep a very close watch and eye on as moving forward. We just can't keep producing reports which are saying the same thing no, need to be active. over and over and over again and recognising things have to be done. But obviously it's not being done to the degree that we would like to see it being done. And hopefully any external report will expose that. And it's just there's so many questions behind the whole thing, mostly for education, I suppose. But okay. No, just no comments. Anyway. Well, I think, I think that's a fair point. And what I was going to suggest that we do, um, Mr Hildage, is that uh, in six months' time, uh, we uh, ask the Department for uh, a report on the progress following those recommendations. If you're content with that, uh, but also what I would like to do is, uh, I would like to, the committee to agree that a statement go out from the committee welcoming the fact that they uh, have taken on board all of our recommendations, making the point that we will be keeping an eye on the the situation as it develops and hopefully improves, and that we will be asking them to come back to this committee in six months' time. Members agreed. Agreed. All members agreed to that. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Mr Donnelly, have you anything you want to say in relation to that? Uh, no, it's welcome and a very positive response. And um, I suppose what I'd look out for, it's a fulsome response. Uh, sometimes you get a tick box response on a recommendation. So it's particularly pleasing the first two recommendations. There are substantive commitments to actually do some serious reviews. Uh, so that's very welcome. Okay. So. <clears throat> With this committee's agreement, we'll, we will ask officials from the EEA to come back to us uh, in September, October time. Okay? That's great. Thank you. Okay, members, we remain in open session to cons consider ministerial directions. Members, this will be a regular agenda item for the next few weeks until the backlog has been addressed. So, agenda item 8 is ministerial directions, pages 3 to 25 of your table pack. Mr Donnelly, Mr Allen and Mr Bingham again will remain for the meeting for this section. Members, as noted as last week's meeting, there's a, long, a backlog of ministerial directions that the PAC will need to address. Uh, this week we are addressing two ministerial directions, however, <coughs> in the future weeks we will address therefore at one time to help uh, alleviate and reduce the backlog. Are members content? Yeah. Um, 
Okay, and I should have uh, omitted to do so. I should have thanked Colette Keane for her very brief appearance in front of the committee this afternoon. Um, perhaps you would do that for me, Mr. Donnelly. Um, okay, so in terms of the MD from the Department of Health uh, Helicopter uh, Emergency Medical Service, members, I refer to correspondence dated the uh, 1st of April 2021 on page one of your table pack from Kieran Donnelly, Controller and Auditor General, regarding the ministerial direction from the Department of Health. Helicopter Emergency Medical Service. Also attached is correspondence dated the 29th of March 2021 to your pages two to five of your table pack from Richard Pengele, Permanent Secretary, Department of Health, outlining the ministerial direction in respect to a decision uh, to make payment of £1 million to the Air Ambulance Service. Members, the background uh, to the MD is the Helicopter Emergency Medical Service is funded by a partnership between the Northern Ireland Ambulance Service brackets NIAS and the Air Ambulance Northern Ireland Charity. The department contributes £1 million per uh, one annum to the NIAS in order to pay for the medical side of the service, which includes clinicians, salaries, medical equipment and drugs. The aviation side of the service, comprising pilot salaries, helicopter leasing and the cost of the, the base, is paid for by the Air Ambulance Service Northern Ireland. Now the department, Northern Northern Ireland Ambulance Service Fund, uh, Air Ambulance NI, which depends on charitable donations. Uh, the CNAG has provided the relevant paperwork from the Minister to underpin the decision to make the payment of £1 million to AANI. Mr Donnelly, have you any comments you want to make on that? Uh, very little. It's just, um, I suppose, the direction relates to the funding of the aviation side of the service, which would normally be funded through charitable donations. I suppose it's the impact of the current it on the um, fundraising, so that it's a one-off, one-off payment. So it's quite a straightforward. Okay. Issue. Do any members have any comments? Agreed. Everyone content? content? I think that's one million pounds well spent. Absolutely. All agreed. agreed. Thank you. Um, MD from the Department of Health. Additional financial assistance schemes to make use of the remaining 2021-22 COVID funding. Members, I refer to correspondence dated the 14th of April 2021 at pages 6 to 7 of your table pack from Mr Donnelly, uh, Controller and Auditor General, regarding a ministerial direction from the Department of Health, <coughs> additional financial assistance schemes to make use of the remaining 2021 uh, COVID funding. Ms Sue Gray, the Accounting Officer of the Department of Finance, wrote to the Controller and Auditor General on the 30th of March 2021 at page 8 of your table pack to advise she had received ministerial direction from the... Finance Minister, in relation to three additional finance schemes, the schemes will make use of the remaining 2020-2021 COVID-19 funding. A scheme to provide one-off grant for businesses uh, occupying premises with a net annual value of £51,000, which were not able to uh, accept access grant funding during the first lockdown. The estimated cost of this proposal is £56.3 million. A scheme to provide a one-off grant to industrial businesses in premises with a net, uh, total net value of between £15,001 and £51,000, which were unable to access either the £10,000 or £25,000 grants during 2020. The estimated cost of this proposal is £29.9 million. £27 .9 million. Apologies. A top-up payment to businesses which received uh, either the £10,000 small grant business or £25,000 grant for retail, hospitality, tourism and leisure in 2020, which will have been unable to access the localised restriction support scheme, brackets LRSS, or coronavirus restriction business support scheme, CRBSS Part B. The estimated cost of this proposal is £93.7 million. The total estimated cost of the three schemes is £177 million. And, uh, sorry, £177 million. Nine. Okay, members, the background from the Controller or General this Ministerial Direction is that the three financial assistance schemes were proposed by the Finance Minister to make use of unallocated sources. The schemes had to be implemented rapidly to make use of the remaining COVID uh, funding within the 2020-21 financial year. Ms Gray wrote to the Finance Minister on the 26th of March 2021, pages 26 and 24 to 26 of your pack, to advise him of the risks with the associated with the proposed schemes. Members, the relevant papers to underpin the decision are as follows. 
The Minister wrote to the Executive on the 10th of March 2021, pages 9 to 23 of your table pack, seeking approval for three financial support schemes. The First and Deputy First Minister approved the proposal of 12th of March 2021 under the Financial Assistance Act 20, 2009, and the Finance Minister subsequently wrote to the Accounting Officer of the Department of Finance directing her to take the proposals forward. Um, Mr Donnelly, would you have any comment to make at this stage? Uh, this is a much more complex direction than the last one and much bigger amount of money involved, uh, total £177 million. And um, I suppose you'll see a lot of reference there to the interplay between different schemes. So it's plugging maybe <coughs> gaps in some of the some of the earlier schemes. Uh, the reasons uh, for the direction, um, the fact that it had to be introduced at great pace, uh, and uh, also reference then, uh, you know, it wasn't possible to maybe target the scheme more precisely. Uh, so uh, you know, you you could actually assist from businesses that could manage okay uh, in the pandemic. Um, there's, um, in the third scheme, the top up, uh, to be fair, there's a, a fair range of uh, exclusions. So that you can see there's a fair bit of thought that has gone into it. Uh, but just given the sheer amount of money involved, uh, you know, we'll be tracking this uh, during our normal financial audit. Okay, does any member have any comment or queries, questions, Mr. Mr. Tillich? We probably will have to clear an address in this because I think we've all been working with business yeah. and companies Absolutely. trying to guide them through the system. So, yep. just, a, just a note. <laughs> yep. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just ask the um, auditor uh, uh, a couple of questions? One, uh, you might not know this off the top of your head, Kieran, but is th this is, if we take this as one big direction, for 177 million, is that that's the biggest direction thus far of the pandemic? Um, it'd be one of the biggest. Uh, well, I'll just need to check that up and come back to you next week because we're doing a bit of work on pulling all the different directions together. So, uh, if you leave that with us, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Is it? I, I don't know if managing public money says anything about this, but I suppose my question is not in any way to you know. It's clear that. We were all calling for money to be spent quickly, and for businesses that hadn't received, you know, holes in in support to, to to be addressed. But is it correct that this is one direction, or should it have been multiple directions? Uh, well, there's three things packaged into one. There, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it being packaged as one direction, chair. Uh, but it's um, because they're, they're all coming from the the same department. <clears throat> Uh, and it's all connected in with the, the rate system, but it's uh, it, there's three components to it. Okay. Is that okay? Content? Yeah. Okay. Any other members? No. Okay. Um, so are members content to note? Hello. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, members, we'll now go into closed session for the final consideration of a report inquiry into capacity and capability into the Northern Ireland Civil Service. Uh, we're now going into closed session. 30.